Rub up your engines! People are saying, I bought a Toyota pickup truck. Well, this guy's got a brand new 2024 Frontier. He wanted a good, reliable truck without a bunch of crap on it. See, it's got a real emergency brake look. Not some electronic pile of crap. I like that. Let's have a push button start. You can't have everything. As we look under the hood, it's a 3.8 liter. It's a good size. It's got 310 horsepower. It doesn't need turbos. It's going to last longer that way. Hey, when I was a kid, the V8 engines only put out a couple of hundred horsepower. Here's the V6. It's got plenty of power. These engines can last a really long time. Unlike Toyota that says they're going to get rid of the V6 in the Tacoma. Nissan's saying nothing about getting rid of their V6 in their pickup trucks. It's an engine that people want. The four cylinders just don't have enough. Uh, if you're pulling, this is a 4x4, four four, so you can go wherever you want. You get plenty enough power to get in and out. The four bangers just don't cut it. That's why he bought this vehicle. And so far, he's totally happy with it. Now, we got 23 with the trailer hooked up that he unhooked so I can have more fun driving it around. And you really don't feel the pull on it either. They've been making these things for quite some time. They just never got to the popularity of the Toyotas for various reasons. They used to be really ugly and boring. They never styled them up, and so people wouldn't buy them. Well, this is all styled up now. I guess they finally learned their lessons, right? Now, this thing is a nine-speed automatic, and you know what people always say, even in the Toyotas, especially in the Fords and GMs, they say they're always hunting for gears. Not only does this not hunt for gears, but he didn't have to put it on the tow button <laughs> when he was towing and it still went perfectly fine. So, unlike Nissan's horrendous front wheel drive Jadco transmissions that hunt and fall apart, this is an actual transmission with nine gears in it that seems to have been pretty well designed. You really have to put the Nissan trucks to one side and their cars on the other because their cars have horrible automatic transmissions, but their trucks they always had pretty good. Even the old Pathfinders, their automatic transmissions were decent, you know. They're making a rear wheel drive, and then now this is front wheel drive added to it because it's four by four. Their basic transmissions on these things are actually quite well. They just never sold all that many of them because in truth, Nissan wasn't any good at marketing them whatsoever. And as per usual, it's a modern engine, right? It's got a timing chain, doesn't have belts. and that crap on it. And if you look down there closely, this thing's actually got working room look you can put your hand off now you just take the plastic crap off right so let's go inside take a look he got it with all the trimmings let's start her up and take a listen well as i clap the brakes on because i pushed it on there we'll take the brake off chain switches two-wheel drive four-wheel high and four-wheel low that's simple that's all you got to do now it's not a racing truck right so it does have the capability you can put it here, you can shift it up and down if you want. But I mean, let's face the fact, people aren't really racing this thing around. Plenty good enough the way it is. If you do want to really go hard, you can shift it by yourself. Got all your controls on the steering column. Cruise control, very simple to operate. You can get it with your right thumb, no problems at all. And you can go through the computer system, stereo system. Got USB, it's got a C. And as we look under, nice solid frame, real frame. This is a body on frame truck this isn't some unibody but a nonsense check out the paint i mean that is a beautiful blue i really like that blue these guys are set for traveling as you can see they're all loaded up so I'll roll up the window so you won't hear too much noise nissan intelligent mobility nice backup camera there got a lot of view got a nice gps set up here and with that 300 plus horsepower this should do pretty good on a little drag strip when you get up there now it's nice up in the air it's not outrageously high but you don't have to worry about flood water and since it's a modern truck they handle a lot better than the old ones look we're cornering relatively quickly you don't need a tire squeal or anything They've upgraded the suspensions on these things. Everybody used to say, ah, the Nissans, ah, they're boring. They don't have everything people want now. You'll see. It doesn't have all the bells and whistles that a Ford or a GM has. You know, all these dancing tailgates and all that crap. But hey, it's me confidence driving. We're going to take it out to the dragster. Nobody coming, so here we go. It's a relatively heavy truck, but it's got 300 something horsepower, so come to a stop. There's nobody right behind us yet, so on your mark, get set, go!
it picked the front end up. Nice sound in V6. Smooth as silk shifting. Got up to 65 pretty quick. And let's say you want to pass somebody here. We're going 50. We'll floor it. You can see it picks up pretty good for passing people. No problems with that. It is made here in the USA, and I got to say, I don't hear rattles or anything. It's a lot quieter than a Ford Ranger, I can tell you that right now. To me, Nissan's going to step up in this truck. And as I said, it's not doing any tricks, turbocharger or anything. This is a naturally aspirated V6 engine. But when they got this much power, hey, I got to say, they did a pretty good job. Look, we're supposed to be going 20, we're going 50. And I don't have any problems at all. I got to say, they pretty much hit the nail on the head with this truck, as far as I'm concerned. It's got plenty of power. And it's quite comfortable. These seats are very comfortable, as is the ride. I gotta say, I haven't been in too many 4x4s that rode as smooth as this. Usually they're quite a bit rougher. They, they've obviously put some thought into the design of the suspension of this thing. And the owner said when he's driving it with that trailer, it doesn't even feel there's a trailer on the back. Well, he's got 300 something horsepower, wouldn't bother it all that much. It's not hunting for gears at all. It shifts at the right time, it doesn't go up and down and wobble. Got this 9 speed transmission pretty down pat, too. As I said, it's mainly their front wheel drive cars that have crappy transmissions at Nissan. Their rear wheel drive ones were always decent transmissions. You know? And all the Z cars, they were all rear wheel drive transmissions, and they were decent transmissions too. It's luxurious, it's got dual climate control, great AC heating system. And as I said, it's not hunting for gears, and watch this, when you slow down, it doesn't have any problems. Very smooth transition down to first gear. It's a pretty smooth ride for a four wheel drive pickup truck. So what do I think of this brand new Frontier? Well, I'll tell you, I'm pleasantly surprised. I'm gonna tell you, the next time somebody says, hey, Toyota's not making a V6 in their Tacoma anymore, you know what I'll tell them? To buy a Frontier with a V6 engine instead. We live in a competitive world. And if one company decides, oh, we don't wanna make those anymore, hey, somebody else can step right in and make something that somebody wants. It isn't like there's only one choice. I like the Toyotas, they last a long time. Frontiers, they also lasted a long time. Just that everybody's got the name with Toyota and they all want a Toyota. Hey, he got exactly what he wanted for 45 grand or so. But when you consider that's the average price of a brand new car in the United States these days, hey, not bad. I had a guy come over here the other day and he bought a Dodge. The Rams now, right? To me, they're still Dodge Rams, but they call them Rams. He bought a Ram. I said, why did you buy a Ram? He said, because I went to the Ford dealer and they wanted $81,000 for a new one. So I can't blame the guy, you know? Either going too high price or they're not giving you what you want. Find a company like this that's still making the six cylinder engines naturally aspirated. We don't need turbochargers. 300 something horsepower, you don't need a turbocharger. It'll run fine the way it is. And not only does it run good, but hey, it's really a good looking truck too. They finally wised up at Nissan. <laughs> and it's not an ugly truck anymore. So, hey, if you're thinking about one, I'll tell you my advice is go road test one. See if you like it or not, you know? You can't hide hunting gears. You know? You're getting a lot of the Fords, as soon as you road test them, you feel them hunting for gears. This baby doesn't hunt for gears at all. So, I gotta give them an A plus on this one. And here's some bonus questions and answers. Rich Anders says, my rear main seal is leaking. 2014 F-150, 180,000 miles, rear main engine seal is leaking. How can I stop it without pulling off the transmission? Well, there's a product out there called AT205 Reseal, like Albert Thomas. It's a company called A. TP products out of Chicago. They do a lot of transmission stuff. It is a polymer. It rejuvenates rubber, right? And that's a rubber seal on your Ford. And you put that in the engine oil, a lot of times it will stop leaking. And I just advise you every time you change the engine oil, put another bottle in or it'll keep rejuvenating it, right? Now, the only thing you really can't use it on is some of these crazy GMs used a Teflon based rear main seal. They're garbage, they leak. It won't help a Teflon seal at all. If you got a GM and it's leaking and you find out, yeah, you got that stupid Teflon rear main seal, don't waste your time putting it in because it will do nothing to Teflon. It only works on rubber-based products, but it works great. You just pour a little bottle, drive it away, and I've seen those things drip, 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 drip. I pour a bottle in, it stops immediately. You want to give it two, three hundred miles of driving to make sure it's working right, but I've seen it stop it within 10, 15 minutes. It's amazing stuff. Now, if it doesn't, you're going to have to pull the transmission off, take the flywheel off, put a new rear main seal, and put all back together. That is an expensive endeavor. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, 
Remember to ring that bell.